Good morning from St. George, Utah. Such a good place, except for the last week, where temperatures have gone from 94 down to currently it's 76 degrees today. And I'm just giving you an update on these muscadines that I have planted here. I finished off the trellis for these muscadines. If you don't know what a muscadine is, uh, just YouTube it or Google it. Hey, hand signals, what's going on? Hey. Um, anyways, m muscadines, they are kind of like a grape, but usually grown in the south. And this is a pulk muscadine. I selected four different varieties. This one is a self-fertile. And here I did paint over the bark this IV Organics white paint because I don't want it to get sunburned. Because in St. George here, things tend to get sunburned. And no new growth in here. This has been in the ground for a while now, maybe a month. Now I asked them to ship it before May so that I could get it in the ground before they started growing. But this one has yet to come up. Here in this next one, we have the Sugargate muscadine. This one is a female variety, uh, which means that you need a self or, yeah, a self fertile next to it to be able to make it produce fruit. And I'll give a more in-depth video on these varieties. But as of right now, you can see there's some growth here. I'm gonna move around to see if I can get no shadows. Look at that nice little growth. You wanna train it to go up the nice little stem here once it gets to a certain height. Just gonna rotate this around because the wind has been beating the crap out of it. Once it gets to a certain height, then we come up to here and we have it go along the left and the right of the wire. And if we look down this blue tube, you might be wondering, what is this blue tube? This is to help keep humidity in and make it so that it doesn't sunburn, which is really beneficial, especially out here in the desert. So I got four tubes for each of the muscadines. That one's doing okay. Uh, you can see there's this white stuff on that. That is not a fungus or anything. Um, the little browns are from the leaves getting beat up against all this stuff. But this is the white paint that I put on there. And that's some of the remnants of it. So if we keep going down the line, here we have a hall muscadine. This one's a hall. You might be saying, well, wait, where is it? Exactly. Where is it? Where did it go? Well, it is down in here in the blue tube. You can see down there, look at that. Yay, growth. It's coming up and out. It's doing great. Coloring's looking good. And eventually, once it gets out here, hopefully by the end of the year, I'll have it up to this. And then the second year, it will go down the line. So first year growth, just trying to get it up to that line. Good morning, Goomies. Those are the Goomies. And this one is a sweet Jenny muscadine. Again, not much growth, but if you look down in there, you can see the green. Oh, look at that beautiful color down there. Yes, it's growing. That's what I want. I want some growth. Gonna have that shoot up. Now, just like grapevines, you wanna take off the new growth at the lower shoots, not shoots, but the lower growth, so that it forces the growth to come up to the tip of the muscadine. And that is the way that you train it to go up to the top. And again, if I can get it up to this wire by the end of the year, and then down to the end, that would be great. And I do not have, muscadines usually take up a lot of real estate. They recommend um, 20 foot lengths. So you'd have between the each muscadine to the right, it would be a 10 foot length and to the left, it would be a 10 foot length of wire because I guess they're vigorous growers. The, what I have set up is about 10 feet total. So from this point to that point, well, no, it's six feet. So I guess I have 12 feet, 12 feet there, 12 feet there, which means that I just need to prune it a good amount and thin it to keep control of these muscadines if they grow. I don't know. This is a total experiment. I know that muscadines don't necessarily grow very well in Utah because it's so dry or because 
most of northern Utah is not as warm. So I'm trying it out down here to see if I can get any growth. I've heard great things about muscadines. Have I ever had one? No, no, I haven't. So why would I grow muscadine? Because I want to try them and I can't get them in the stores here. So why would I grow something that I can get in the stores here? That would just be ridiculous. I know, ridiculous. Anyways, that's the update for my four muscadines that are in the row there. And I hope that was informative. If it wasn't for you, it surely was for me. And I'll give a video on each variety so that if you're in Utah or in the desert of Arizona or Nevada, anywhere close to here, you too could probably try these muscadines. But there's a total experiment. I might fail, which I'm fine with. Um, and also, this is just wood mulch. I'll come back over here. Wood mulch. You can see, I have it. And right there, a couple inches deeper, it is nice and cool. That's the water line, the drip irrigation. But um, it's lightly moist down in there. But um, it is about five or six inches deep. And then I planted them in sand because I want good draining soil. So what will happen is the mulch will break down with fungus and bacteria and send nutrients down to the roots through the sand and hopefully we'll get some better growth to the side of it. Um, this soil is silty soil. I thought it was more of a clay, but it's not, it's actually silty. So you can take the, it will, well, I think the theory is that it will shoot through the silty soil with no problems, but we will see. Okay, hope you enjoyed this video. Send me any info if you have questions or comments. If you think I'm a complete idiot with growing muscadines in St. George, Utah, in a dry desert, uh, let me know because it'll make me feel good inside. All right, have a good one.